If you're wondering how I clicked these classic shots of birds and you'd like to click similar pictures, then stick around. In this video, I'll teach you all the camera settings that go into clicking pictures like these. I'm Girish Menon and I just show up on your screen and start talking about photography. I offer you free photography tips that will help you to click better pictures and I release a new video every week. So please subscribe so that you don't miss out. This was at Bharatpur Bird Sanctuary in India. I clicked these pictures with a Canon 300mm f4 IS lens on a Canon 7D Mark II camera. Before we talk about focus and exposure, let's look at the lesser spoken about settings on the Canon 7D Mark II. I set my image quality to RAW always. RAW files are uncompressed files that let me adjust the white balance, color correct my pictures and counter lens abnormalities through software such as Adobe Photoshop. Image review off. I am almost always clicking in the burst mode. I don't need to look at my pictures after I click them because there is no time for that when clicking wildlife. Beep disabled. Obviously, you don't want your camera beeping every time it achieves focus. Release shutter without card. Off. This is very important. Setting it off prevents me from pressing down the shutter release button when there is no card in the camera. So that I don't think I'm clicking pictures when I'm not. Lens aberration correction disabled in the camera, but I'll apply lens corrections in Adobe Lightroom later. This corrects distortion, vignetting and other abnormalities that every lens has. I set my white balance to AWB, which is auto white balance. Auto lighting optimizer off. This setting, when turned on, pulls out details in the shadows. This can be useful in tricky situations, but it only affects JPEG files, so it's best to leave it off. Picture style, neutral. I like to see my colors muted. It's just an easier starting point for color correction. And then, long exposure noise reduction, off. High ISO speed noise reduction, off. Noise reduction can be applied in an editing software if needed. It's important to check how it affects the image before deciding whether or not to use it. Too much of it makes pictures look unnatural. I never use it. Highlight tone priority. Off. Turning this on corrects your exposure in a way that highlights are pulled back. Since I'm always spot metering and checking my exposures all the time, it's no use having it on. HDR mode. Disable HDR. I don't like HDR. Never did. Now let's go to the autofocus menu. Here we have different options, which are combinations of three main settings. The tracking sensitivity, accelerate or decelerate tracking, and AF point auto switching. So instead of choosing one of these, I go to the custom menu settings, configure my menu 1, select items to register and have them here. They are greyed out right now because I have already registered them on my custom menu. I set my tracking sensitivity to locked on. The lower the value, the longer the same subject is tracked if it leaves the AF point. I choose locked on because I have my autofocus area set to single point and I choose one of the 65 focus points as per the composition that I desire and place the eye of the creature on that point. So I want my focus locked on the eye at all times. Accelerate or decelerate tracking. I have it to one. Canon explains that with zero, Stable focus can be achieved on subjects that do not accelerate or decelerate. Plus 1 and plus 2 are suitable for subjects that move suddenly, accelerate or stop. AF point auto switching 0. This setting is irrelevant for me 
because it takes effect with 65 point auto selection, zone AF, large zone AF and AF point expansion whereas I am always on single point. Now this is an interesting setting, AI servo first and second image priority. This of course is relevant only when you are using your camera in the burst mode which I always am and I always set my autofocus mode to AI servo. When it is set to AI servo, as long as I have my shutter release button lightly pressed down, the camera will continue to update focus all the time. Now with this setting, I decide whether or not my camera should go ahead and take the first picture even if the subject is not in focus when I click it. Setting the AI servo first image priority to release means that the camera will record the first image even if the subject is not in focus. Whereas if I set the priority on focus, it will get going only once the subject is in focus. I set both my first and second image priority to focus. This may slow me down for a couple of seconds if the camera is not able to lock focus on my subject straight away. But I'd rather ensure that my subject is in focus than end up with a bunch of out of focus photos. Select AF area, select mode. I'm just interested in the single point and the point within the point for reasons that I've already mentioned. Another interesting setting, orientation linked AF point. Setting it to separate AF points, point only, means that I can select a different single focus point when my camera is horizontal and a different point when it's vertical. So that way, I can have different focus points selected when I switch from one orientation to the other. AF point display during focus, all, constant. That way I can see all my points, so I see where I'm going. Now let's talk about the playback menu. Highlight alert, enable, so that I can see blinkies when any part of my picture is overexposed. Once these settings are in place, I don't need to change them, ever. Even if I remove my camera battery and don't put one back for a long time, these settings won't change. When I'm clicking birds with a 300mm f4 lens, I keep my aperture to 4. At 4, I'm letting in all the light that this lens can take in and at the same time, I ensure that the background goes completely out of focus. Just have a look at the extent to which the background has gone out of focus in each of these images. With plenty of light coming in at f4, I can set a lower ISO value. Lower ISO means better image quality. Then all I need to do is balance the shutter speed to match the aperture and ISO combination for the available light. I use spot metering to help me set the exposure. For these images, I identified the brightest area of the frame, spot metered that area and then overexposed that spot metered reading by about two stops. I like to ensure that my shutter speed is at least 1 over 250th of a second when I'm using this lens. The guideline for shutter speed is that it needs to be at least as fast as 1 over the focal length. So for this lens, it should be around 1 over 320th of a second. But considering the fact that the 300ml mil lens is not so super telephoto and small and light, 1 over 250 works just fine for images like these. If my shutter speed is too slow when the exposure scale is balanced, I'll increase the ISO value and try again. With the exposure in place, I'll select a single focus point depending on my composition and align that point with the eye of the bird. And with that, I'm ready to click my pictures. I'm sure you'll be able to click much better pictures using your newfound knowledge about the Canon 7D Mark II for bird photography. I'm Girish Menon. Please subscribe to my channel to watch a new video every week that will help you to become a better photographer.